gentlemen. Before we go to Dean Lonergan and start talking about this man, Jai Opatia, who won a cruiserweight IBF World Championship belt in Australia over the weekend. What he did was something that no Australian boxer has ever done. He won a World Championship as an amateur. He has now won it as a heavyweight, and he did it breaking his jaw in the second round, and then he stood for another 10 rounds. Lonergan called it on Fox Sport the most courageous sporting performance any Australasian has put in probably ever. Now, Dean is not known for a bit of hyperbole and hype and hoopla. Of course he is. He's a promoter. But when he said that, I thought, well, at least, you know, to do the guy a, 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 a service, I've got to go back and look. And when you saw what this man, Jai Opataya, has gone through to gain that, it is just the ultimate mind over matter sporting experience. I, I can't praise, I mean, it's awful to watch, but I can't praise the courage and resilience of this man enough, but Dean will talk about that. Siom, how are you, mate? Good night. Right. Yes, please. Can you all please vote those those idiots out, mate? They're oh, destroying look, this. They are destroying it, mate. They've got no idea. Mate, it, it's, it, they just clogged up all the other streets now. Yeah. And try, I mean, forget about Queen Street and forget about the heart of the city. Just try to go down Waterfront or try to go yep. up Simon Street or yep. Hobson Street yep. or Alba Street. Idiots. Oh. Please vote them out. Yeah, look, I, I didn't uh, call about that, but good yeah. on you for bringing it no, up. No, look, I, know, I, took, I, went, I brought my car into the central city about four months ago for the first time in a long time. Oh, it's for And I ended up, every street I turned around was a one way going the other way. I had buses beeping at me. I was panicking. Ah, I didn't know where the hell I was going. Yeah, it's, and look, how, how are they going to expect people to come back into the city? Oh, no, they're all going to ride a bike in, Mate, are they? What I, what I feel deeply sorry for, honestly, and what people don't understand is those poor beggars who have invested millions of their life into owning a business in the center city, and it's all destroyed. Yep. Not for their generations, but for the generations coming. Yep, they, right. I mean, the poor businesses on Albert Street, mate, they were building that, that stupid one lane, whatever it was, underground or upground or whatever they were doing for hundreds of years. Yeah, that's fair, like hundred years, yeah. all the businesses left totally and right. Totally agree, yep. All of them. Now, yep. I called about Adesanya, but thanks for bringing up that, and yes, people, go out and those idiots Thank you so open. much. We will, and I appreciate your call too. 0800 223 Really important, people, that especially you young crowd, it's really important, Lachlan, that your youngies vote in these upcoming local body elections. You've got to do it. You've got to vote these idiots. Same as in Christchurch. All of you have got to vote these people that can't get off their backside and get that stadium organised. Get them out. Get them out. Get, for any excuse maker, get them out. Same as in Wellington. All of the... I heard the cycle lane guy the other day talking about why do you want another tunnel? You need another tunnel, mate, because nobody rides a bike down there, for goodness sake. Apart from you, I'm not with a your stupid rider. beard and your bicycle clips and your craft beer hanging out your backside. Anyway, yeah, let us get... Craft beer's good. Come on. Steady. Is it? Steady. That's nice. Well, some are. Some are good, It's yes. actually still have it. Some old, bikes aren't so bad. The old the old lager's not too bad. Oh, it doesn't have to be a craft beer. It doesn't have to cost you $14, mate. I'll tell you what. Sometimes it's just nice and relaxing and one-dimensional to sit back and have just a tiger or something just <laughs> plain. Old school. How desperately old school are you? Jai <laughs> Opet... Oh, sorry, Jai Opetaya. I hope I pronounced that right. O-P-E-T-A-I-A. What a fight we've seen. It's greatest, the invincible, but... Has Opatia made history? Perhaps Australia has a new world champion. Magnificent. You ever practice that at home and no one else is in the room? It's really difficult to do. I love mm. the guy Buffer who does it before the the um, MMA mm. as well. Dean Lonergan joining us. Dino, as I said, Dean Lonergan from Dean D and L Events, which is himself and his son Liam. He's one of Australasia's obviously foremost boxing promoters and also behind the the Fight for Life. I am Hope with Mike King as well, mate. I was watching this on the news last night. I just, I was gobsmacked. The guy, you fight a Jay, Jay couldn't speak afterwards. What he went through uh, for obviously himself and what he went through for you is just extraordinary. Well, I'll tell you what, he didn't do it for me. He did it for himself and good luck to him. He deserves every accolade that comes his way. But uh, I've got a, actually I'll text you a, a, uh, an x-ray of his jaw, which Please is do. broken on both sides. It is just hideous. 
Actually, hold on one second. I'll, I'll do it right now. Go on. All right. Technology. Because I can tell you this, Marty. It is nothing short of unbelievable what Jaya Bataya, mate, has gone through. And, uh, yeah, I just... To do that in the second it. round, Dean, to get your jaw broken, he says he heard it crack. Then to play... So when did you know that it, that it had been done? I didn't realise it. I, I knew it was broken uh, in the 12th round. I saw his mouth guard lo- go out and his little jaw was flopping all over the place. And I've just sent you the text. Yeah, have just, a look at the... Uh, oh, my goodness. Have a look at his jaw. Oh, my goodness. Oh, that's broken now, right through, mate. On both sides. On both sides. So it's fair to say Jai fought with that for at least three or four rounds on both sides. He had one side fractured you know, in round two of the fight. So I've, I've never seen anyone with the courage that he's got. Not only that, he had an injury probably eight, nine weeks ago, um, which made us delay the fight. And basically the injury was he did it in sparring. His ribs cracked and broke and separated from his cartilage. Now, there is no more painful thing in sport than to have a bloody rib cartilage. They were incredibly painful. And, mate, the surgeon told me that when he fixed it, he'd never seen anything like it. And this guy, uh, he put a sleeve on it, uh, we set the date for July 2. I thought there's no chance the kid will be ready. The, his team told me he would be. Mate, his recuperative powers are amazing. He's overcome unbelievable obstacles to get here. And it's those obstacles, I think, that have been in his way that he's had to overcome have made him the tough guy that he is. And I, I, I don't think there would be a tougher performance in Australian sport ever to what this kid's just gone through. Dean Lonigan is with us. He is the pro- promoter of, and I, I don't know if he's the manager of, but certainly the promoter of of Jai. And and I'm reading out of the Australian press that they, they, they're throwing names around like John Sattler and Sam Burgess. And for a lot of our younger listeners, they'll know Sam Burgess who cracked his cheekbone in, in the first minute of that grand final for Souths against Canterbury. Sattler did something similar as well, playing with, you know, what they call debilitating facial injuries. Just the sheer pain... But this guy's getting punched in the face after he's done this, Dean. That's 100%. He had, had the, not only by, 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 by you know, just the boxer, but by the world's best boxer at the cruiserweight division. And uh, the pain that Jai would have had to endure and get through, as well as not only you know get through the pain, but sort of put together a game plan to help him win this fight is nothing short of incredible. You know, this is a guy who fought for five years with a broken hand. It wasn't until I saw him in sparring. <laughs> he was wincing every time he was hitting somebody. I'm going, what the hell's going on here? So we got that fixed about a year and a half ago, and it took him, you know, a good nine months to recover from that. So he's only had five fights with me, and uh, probably only, you know, two or three fights in the last two or three years, you know, through to COVID and injuries. And, mate, to do what he did against the world's best is nothing short of incredible. So how good is this boy going to be when he fight, puts together two or three or four fights in a row in one year? It's going to be nothing short of incredible. So, you know, looking forward to what the future brings for Jai. First ever Australian to win an amateur world title, now a world professional title in the cruiserweight division. And he's fighting a guy in Bredis or Brightus uh, that, as you say, is undisputed as well. So that makes it even more special. The only loss that Bredis has taken his entire career was on a points decision against the current unified heavyweight champ, Alexander Ursek. And many people thought he won that fight. So that gives you an idea of just how good Bredis is, you know, because Ursek destroyed Anthony Joshua over 12 rounds about eight months ago. So it's fair to say that Jai Abitaya should be mentioned in the rear air of some of the, uh, you know, the best boxers in the world right now. So, mate, he's, he's got a long way to go in his career. He's only 27 years of age. And he's the uh, current, he's, he's the first guy, I think, to, uh, in the upper weights to over here to win win a, a world title, you know, yes, one yes. of the major yeah. bodies. So it's a, you know, it's a huge deal over here. Jai Opataya, and when you look at the spelling of that name, obviously we're going to think, oh, is that Māori, is that Polynesian, is there some connection to New Zealand or not? Samoan, and Samoan. the Opataya's, a whole lot of, a whole lot of Opataya's come from uh, Glen Eden, and there we're talking with Bolivia. Yeah, but so it's fair to it. say that, uh, you know, when it comes to the, our wonderful Polynesian community that's in Australia, a lot of them have ties and links back to New Zealand, if they did, certainly didn't start in New Zealand. He beat a guy called the Latvian Punisher. I mean, what does that say to you, mate? I mean, that says that you're going to get hurt, doesn't it? Mate, I, when he came out, Breedis came out, and he came out to this sort of really weird, ominous music, and he had a, had a hood over his head, and he looked very much like Darth Maul. And I'm thinking, gee whiz, this, uh, this guy, he's here to do the business. And Breedis turned up in shape. He was ripped. He was cut. He's one of the most professional guys you can hope to deal with in terms of, you know, the way he gets fit and strong and healthy and has done for a very long time. But uh, it's just a testament to Jai's tenacity to do what he did. And I, I can't speak highly enough 
you know, I was there when Joseph Parker beat Andrew Ruiz was there when bloody uh, Jeff Horn beat Manny Pacquiao. And I've got to say, I've never seen anything as tough as this in my entire life. And those were two amazing and great victories for, for great boxers that I was involved with. But, gee whiz, I've, I've never seen anything like this. Well, I know, you, you know, your memory went down the toilet about, uh, what, two decades ago. But it was five years exactly to the day that Horn beat Pacquiao yesterday, mate. Did you know that? And you were there? Yes, of course I did that. Right. And we uh, we were using that in all of our promotional material because, you know, it's quite a, it's a, that was a massive day in Australian sport. And this is a massive day in Australian sport for a whole different reason. Obviously, at Pacquiao versus Horn, there's 51,000 there. Mate, you know, Manny Pacquiao was a global superstar. But at that time, Pacquiao wasn't the number one welterweight in the world. He's probably on a decline. Whereas this kid, Breedis, and he's no kid at 37 years of age, he, uh, he was the number one cruiserweight in the world undisputed number one and mate Jai went out and beat him so it's nothing short of I, I think it's just an incredible victory Dean Lonergan with us who is one of the, the Australasia's foremost promoters uh, I don't even know what your title is these days mate where did you find Jai? Um, I've got a matchmaker a guy called Stuart Duncan and Stewie is the guy who identifies all the talent that we pick up and uh Jai he, he had Jai in one of our cards in fact I'm pretty sure Jai fought in one of our cards in New Zealand way back when Joseph Parker fought at the, maybe, at the uh, Trust Stadium at West Auckland. Yeah. And um, Stewie sort of was adamant that Jai was the guy that we should pick up. He was selected for Australia at the Olympics at 16 years of age, competed at 17 years of age. So, mate, he's done a lot, and Stewie always had faith in the guy. And uh, I looked at him early on and thought, hmm, not quite sure. But the reason was he had a broken hand. Right. You know, he couldn't really connect. <laughs> yeah. So as soon as... As soon as his hand comes right, mate, he turns himself and it was, he had incredible boxing skills anyway and he used to fight around it. But once his hand came right and he can actually start hitting people 100%, all of a sudden, mate, he goes from being a very, very good boxer to something that's nothing short of amazing. Okay, Dan, so, so where does he go from here now? What do you do with him now? Um, first and foremost, get him right. He's got to get healthy. Yeah. And once he's healthy, well, then we'll make some decisions. But, you know, I'll, I'll start contacting people from all around the world. I've got a rough idea what Jai wants. And ultimately, it's about what he wants because he's the world champion. He gets to dictate terms to a large degree. Mm -hmm. So um, we'll just wait and see. He's, he's got his heart set on winning the WBO World Cruiserweight title. It's held by Lawrence Acoli. So that's something we'll be exploring over the next couple of months. Well, it's so good talking to you as always. I want to also praise you for all the work that the people here are doing on your behalf because you couldn't come with COVID with Fight for Life. I am hope we're gearing up this month for that. It's just going to be an absolute monster, mate. I remember the first one back in Newmarket with your mate whose her house had burnt down and you, you punched that big old fat guy to the ground with one to the gut and one to the jaw. <laughs> mate, that's a long time ago. It is. It is a long time ago. And also, just to also reaffirm, who is the king of radio? That is me. It has never been you. Let's just reestablish that, right? Well, there's no doubt that you've always been the king of radio, Martin Devlin, and I just stepped in for a little while and, you know, took your place and won a whole lot of awards. No. Oh. trying too hard. Please, out Good Lord, please. Come on, man. I mean, let's... Okay, well, hold the line. Actually, I want to ask you about Izzy. So hold the line. I've got one more question for you. Uh, Dean, I just want to know about Israel Adesanya. He obviously has made some post-match press conference just quickly on that, having a crack at the fans and so forth. Your thoughts? Look, I, I think what he's doing is nothing short of incredible. And from what I can gather about Israel Asanya is that he rises to the level that's required. And uh, there's been a little bit of commentary over here that, you know, the fight wasn't as exciting as it possibly could have been. But, mate, that guy is something special. And uh, the fact that... And that, I've got to say that City Kickboxing is something special. They've got so many guys who are, who are prominent in the UFC, which is obviously a global competition. And obviously Israel Asanya leading the charge. You've got to say... It is an unbelievable testament to uh, to the guys running that show in, in Israel just to how good they are. Yeah, and, 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 and just your, your final comment on this, because the way that he fought yesterday was a bit like Floyd Mayweather has fought some of his fights. He did what he had to do. You don't have to go in there and, and absolutely rip, snort and bust every single fight because it, you know you put yourself at risk. You, you have, you're there to win the fight. It's kind of almost like a real professional attitude to take to it. Look, I guess it is, but we're also entertainers. We're in the entertainment business. And um, here's the thing. So long as you keep winning, mate, the big paychecks keep coming. So I reckon Israel can do what the hell he wants. And what's fascinating is that he said he'll never fight New Zealand again, you know, given what was what, I, what went on with the New Zealand government around COVID. And, mate, you've got to say that's a, that's a pretty powerful statement from a guy who's on a global stage 
uh, knocking the New Zealand government, you know, for the stance that they took. And I've got to be honest, I look at what the government policies have been around sport and opening things up, and they've been very slow to the case. So I have some sympathy with Israel. Yeah, well, when you when you lead ESPN Sports Centre News, when you lead the ESPN website, I can't remember the All Blacks ever doing that because they haven't done it. World Rugby announced World Rugby World Cups going to the United States. It didn't even make that news. Israel Adesanya dominated both those, the web and the sports news yesterday, Sports Centre. What does that tell you, mate? Well, it just says he's on a global stage, you know. And, mate, I remember watching him uh, many, many years ago on Jason Suddy's King of the Ring. And it just goes to show the breeding ground for New- of New Zealand sport is nothing short of sensational. You know, like, that we can, again, such a small country can sort of get on the global stage uh, and do what they do. It's just, uh, it's, it's incredible the tenacity of a lot of Kiwis, you know, making it big around the world.